fact, Mary's song, which that last verse of that song that we just sang, is the scriptural words that she sang. Um, and so, uh, as I, as I was singing that, I thought, yes, let it be that we will sing Mary's song with her during this Christmas season. So our message, our scripture lesson today, is a part of that song. It's Luke 1, verses 46 through 50, and you'll find it in the Pew Bibles on page 831 or on page 1589. I encourage you to open your Bible or the Bible on your phone or on the Pew Bible and keep it out in front of you. So Luke 1 beginning at verse 46. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. We pray with you. Father, uh, as we move through Advent, as we look at the words that Mary sang as she was expecting the birth of your son, may we experience in you the joy of your first coming, the promise of your second coming, and may we echo with Mary the hope, the joy, the peace, and love that Christmas brings. And it's in the name of your son that we pray. Amen. So I already talked with the children's message a little bit about Advent, that Advent is, signifies an arrival, and the Sundays leading up to Christmas are a time of watching, of waiting for that first Christmas, to, for the reminder of that first Christmas. And so during Advent, we contemplate that hope and peace and joy and love that Christmas promises and prepare ourselves to experience them in freshness and in renewal. Now, the word ponder uh, means to think about something carefully. And in the Latin, it means to weigh, to weigh something in the mind, to reflect on it. And the word ponder, or treasure up, is used in scripture to describe Mary. She pondered things in her heart. She treasured things in her heart, meaning that she thought about them. She considered them. She contemplated them. And so during these Sundays of Advent, we're going to be looking at a part of her pondering, which is her song. The um, original name of the song is called the Magnificat, from the word magnify, which means to hold something in great esteem. The song, if you'll notice as we go through, really doesn't say a whole lot about the baby she's expecting, expecting as far as I'm um, having this baby, as much as it is turning her praise and her focus to God, and who he is, and what he has done and how great he is. And so today, we're talking about hope. The first candle that was lit is the candle of hope. And Joyce Meyer Ministry put out a quote about hope. It said, hope is a positive expectation, a joyful expectation that something good is going to happen to you. You know, we all have hopes at Christmas. Our kids have hopes probably for certain gifts. You know, we have hopes maybe that all our family will be able to be together, maybe that all our family be able to be together and be nice to each other. Um, we have hopes for ourselves, for what this season will be like, for what the coming new year will be like. We have hopes for our future. We have hopes for our country. And the Jews had hopes as well. They had been hoping for their Messiah to come. And they had been waiting a long time. The Lord had promised a Messiah through the line of David. He had told David, there will always be a king to sit on your throne. And in the passage we heard read earlier from Jeremiah 33, they remembered these things. The days are coming, declared the Lord, when I will fulfill the good promise I made to the people of Israel and Judah. Romans 8.24 says that hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. So they had been waiting patiently for Messiah to come, but years had passed. Centuries had passed. And no Messiah. And now Rome was in control of their land. Their religious leaders were self-absorbed and corrupt and offered no hope to the majority of the people that God would ever even care about them. 
And God himself had been silent for a long time. It had been 400 years since they had had a prophet that had spoken from God. And so maybe they were feeling hopeless. It's a feeling or, or, of despair about something. Will it really happen? Now, we're focusing on, on Mary. And you know, we tend to romanticize Mary. Art depicts her often as very serene and well-dressed with, you know, heavenly glowing halo over her head. But we need to be reminded that Mary was an ordinary person. She had hopes and dreams <clears throat> of her life. She was planning a wedding. She was preparing to raise a family that she dreamed about and hoped about. And she too was waiting for Messiah, for God to keep his promise to her people and to send their Messiah, to send the one who would deliver them. And as this young woman experienced the normal ups and downs of life, perhaps she recalled those words that were written in Jeremiah, but maybe she recalled some other words that are very meaningful to a lot of, of people I know from Jeremiah 29, where the Lord says, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. She was an ordinary person like us. And Mary, like every Jew of her generation, needed some sign that their hope was not in vain. Solomon wrote in Proverbs 13.10, Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. And we all need hope. Hope that God will make all things right as he said he's going to. Hope that he forgives and heals, that he will work in our lives, that he will work in our families, that he will give us that abundant life that he says he'll give, that he will come again as he said he would, and that he will take us to be with him. And as you sit here today, you know what the hopes are that you have. And maybe you've been waiting a long time for some of them to be fulfilled. Waiting for God to fulfill those promises in your life. Maybe needing a sign that your hope is not in vain. I have good news for you today because Christmas is that sign. Christmas is hope. I said it before, I'm a Lord of the Rings fan. And in the second uh, of the trilogy of movies, which is the Two Towers, the people of Rohan are in their fortress of Helm's Deep. They know that a battle is coming. The armies of Isengard, thousands are coming against them. And they're preparing for this battle. And any male who was capable of holding a sword, yes, it was discrimination, women didn't get to carry the swords in that, but any male who was capable of holding a sword is, is given one. And there's a very powerful scene in that movie that I always remember that has to do with hope. There's a young man who's holding a sword He's around the fire and he's just kind of looking around, just bewildered and overwhelmed. And Aragorn, who is the future king, sees him and says, give me your sword. What is your name? He says, Hala, son of Hama, my lord. The men are saying that we will not live out the night. They're saying that it's hopeless. And so Aragorn takes the sword and looks at it and he swings it dramatically a couple times and holds it. He says, this is a good sword, how son of Tom. And he bends down, gives it back to this boy and says, and there is always hope. You see, Aragorn, though he would be king, was mindful of this young man who needed an encouraging sign of hope. Aragorn collapsed this distance between himself as the future king and an overwhelmed young boy. When I was at MSU, uh, I took a history class that was being taught by a visiting professor. And there were well over 100 people in the class. And at the first exam, we were, you know, we were in one of those big auditoriums, and I usually sat like halfway up, uh, where I could see kind of straight to the little screen and all that. 
And after our first exam, we were told that we could come and pick up our graded blue books in the front of the classroom. So across the classroom were letter designations for your last name to come up and get your exam. So I went up, and mine wasn't there. So I went up, and there was a little line around the instructor, and I went up to him, and I said, well, you know, mine isn't up there. And he said, well, what's your name? And I told him, and he pulled one out from his lap and gave it to me. And he said, in a class this big, he said, I generally never know who the students are who do really well on the exams. And so I keep them so that you have to come to me and I know who you are. And obviously the fact that I remember that tells you how impactful it was to me. It meant that my professor noticed me, that this visiting professor who didn't have to do this close this distance, collapse this distance, to be mindful of me and encouraging of me. You see, mindful means to be conscious or aware of something. And God was mindful of Mary. She says this, My soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. He noticed her. God collapsed the distance and let Mary know that he saw her, that he knew her. And he gave Mary an encouraging sign of hope fulfilled, choosing her to be the mother of Messiah. She experienced the enormity of God's mindfulness, saying, All generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. He's noticed me. He's been mindful of me. And we know her road would not be easy. Uh, the offertory instrumental that Randy played is called Breath of Heaven. And it's a song about Mary, about her saying, I, I'm traveling this road. Breath of Heaven, hold me together. Be near me. But her heart's longing in the midst of it was being fulfilled. And as, Proverbs, as, as Solomon's proverb says, it was a tree of life. For her because she knew God would be with her. He had chosen her. He had been mindful of her. And God reminds all of us today through Mary that he keeps his promises in the past, in the present, and for the future. And that our hope is not in vain. And so Mary's song springs from her soul. Uh, the Mary's Song devotional in the Illustrated Children's Ministry says this, Our souls are our deepest, truest selves. When we speak from our souls, we are saying what is most important to us and most real for us and in us. What is the deepest and truest in Mary is her trust that God is by her side and her hope is that for all generations, people will remember forever God's goodness to her and know that it is for them, too. Mary, an ordinary Jewish girl, renews hope for you and for me at Christmas. Christmas is hope for all who feel hopeless. What is the hope of your soul this year, this day? Maybe it's healing a body for yourself or someone you know. Maybe it's healing of mind or a spirit or a soul. Maybe it's simply having strength for the journey that you are on at this stage in your life. Maybe you need deliverance from something. Maybe you need God's forgiveness, a renewed hope of his salvation in your life. Maybe you just need to be renewed in your hope that he is coming again. Christmas is reassurance that God is mindful. He knows you. He knows your hopes and your dreams. And he is with you. So this Christmas, my prayer for you, and I know the Lord's prayer for you, and what Mary said is her prayer for you, is that you will know that your hope in everything God has promised is not in vain, because he fulfilled his promise to send the Savior through her the first time. And everything else he said is a sure hope. Let it be for you this Christmas, 
a tree of life in your soul. I'm going to be sharing communion in a few minutes. And you may think it's odd to celebrate communion, Advent, his birth. But his birth was so that he could die. So that he could have flesh and blood to be broken, to fulfill that hope that we would be with him eternally. To give us healing and wholeness. To give us renewed hope and the certainty of his coming at the end. And so I think it's fully appropriate that at the beginning of the season of Advent, we remember his first coming and the promise of his second coming and the hope that that gives us each day of our lives. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, this is a tough time of year. Um, those things that are not realized in our life seem to come greatly to the forefront this time of year. We have hopes. Maybe we've been hoping for things for many, many years in our own lives or in our families' lives, for our children, for a loved one, in our nation. And yet, Father, we see in Mary someone who didn't have an easy journey, but who recognized that you were mindful of her. You noticed her, and whatever she faced in that journey, she could face with confidence and peace and complete hope because she knew that you were with her. And she reminds us, Father, that it's the same for us. We may think that we're too obscure for you to see us, but you see us. You know us. You know what is in our souls. And you long to remind us that Christmas is affirmation that you will fulfill in us all that you have promised. So for that one that's here today who's been feeling a little hopeless, a little lost, wondering if they can really hold out another day, and sing with Mary, my soul magnifies the Lord. My soul rejoices because he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. You've been mindful of us. Remind us of that each day as we anticipate celebrating your birthday. It's in the name of that baby, that son, that glorified Jesus Christ who is in heaven and right now at your right side.